Hi, I'm Brian, and I hate wrestling. You may remember me from such YouTube videos as Designated Drivers, The Life-Saving Nerds, and David vs. Super Goliath. This video is something of a follow-up to the latter. It was brought to my attention that Chris Hero vs. Jack Evans from the 2015 Battle of Los Angeles is not the only kick out at one match out there. When I heard that, I was like, okay, sign me the fuck up. And to make a short story even shorter, here we are. I love me some wrestling matches that tell a unique story that makes sense, stories that exude clarity and are instantly understandable and relatable. This is one of those matches. In other words, they're not out there just doing moves back and forth to each other. Pretty much every move they make has a very clear purpose that adds to the story being told that anyone would be able to pick up on right away. If you haven't seen my previous video on wrestling storytelling, I recommend checking it out simply because it explains what basic wrestling storytelling is, and I'm not going through that shit again. Besides, that match ties really nicely into that basic framework, but this one, not so much. This one is kind of more advanced, much less formulaic. This match isn't so much about sticking to what wrestling normally is, it's more just like, this guy and this guy. Realistically, what would happen? Now, make it into a story. On one side, you have Darby Allen, an e-boy with a death wish who's out to prove himself. In the opposite corner, you have Chris Hero, kind of the exact opposite of that. A big dude who listens to hip-hop and by this point in his career has absolutely nothing left to prove. And speaking of something to prove, this match is taking place in Evolve, which is, by this point, with all due respect, basically a developmental territory for WWE's developmental territory. Darby's the up-and-comer, while Hero is somewhat of an ambassador for WWE. While there's technically nothing riding on this match, if you ask Darby, he'd probably tell you there's a fuckton riding on this match. December 15th, 2018. We're live on iPay-Per-View from the Laboom Nightclub in New York City. Your commentators are Lenny Leonard and Ron Nimmy. Your ring announcer is Timothy Barr. Darby's out first wearing a creepy Chris Hero mask, and he rips it in half, which is disrespectful and pretty ballsy for a dude who's outweighed twice over and out-experienced. Is that a word? Oh well. Hero's out next to the reception he arguably deserves. In my previous video about Hero and Jack Evans, I explained the babyface heel dynamic of a wrestling match. This match doesn't follow that at all. Here, Darby seems to be neither a good guy or a bad guy. He's just a guy doing his own thing, and you make of him what you will. Hero, on the other hand, is playing more of an aggressive veteran, which is not really the same thing as a heel or a babyface, so this dynamic is much more based on who they are as people and what they uniquely have to offer, and not so much this forced idea of who's a good guy and who's a bad guy. They start off with Hero ragdolling Darby, which, just by looking at these two, is probably what you'd expect. Darby gets a headlock, and Hero's like, yeah, nice try, bro, and he throws him over, but Darby deftly lands on his feet. He seems a bit hesitant to follow up, though, and Hero just looks at him like, come on, boy, what do you got? Darby goads Hero a little bit and uses his tiny agile frame to roll and fly around, doing what he does best to get the upper hand. It's only when he takes it to the mat that Hero can capitalize. It's a sound transition, but still a mistake by Darby. You're not going to tap this dude out. I'm, I'm sorry, bro. It's just not in your cards this time. A snap mare and Darby kicks out at one. Hero's like, the fuck? And he pins him down two more times, and Darby pugnaciously kicks out at one both times. Here's what you get for that, you little fuck. Hero goes for a whip, but Darby holds on. And Hero's like, huh. While Darby gives him this look that just screams, I will never give up. Well, you know what? It's kind of hard to give up if you're unconscious, says Hero. He then has this look on his face like, wow, it's actually pretty fun to throw someone around like that. And I can't blame him, because it does look fun to throw Darby Allen around. Kind of in the same way it's fun to jump off of buildings in Grand Theft Auto. Speaking of fun, Hero kicks Darby in the face, and then he knocks some nerd's hat off. Normally that's a heel move, and I get the sense that it's part of a larger plan to get the crowd off of his train and more onto Darby's, without being too overt and out of character about it. Plus, it's a small, funny thing, it's not like he spit in the dude's face or something. So in my opinion, it's a tiny detail that works on many levels, and it just goes to show how masterful and in the zone Hero is. Or, you know, maybe I'm just giving him too much credit and he's just fucking around. I don't know. Either way, I enjoyed it. Hero notices the mask that Darby ripped off during his entrance, and he teaches him a lesson about respect, sentoning him on the goddamn ring apron. It's the hardest part of the ring. The Canadian part of the ring, if you will. 
The crowd begins to chant Darby's name as he tries to beat the count, while Hero patiently waits for his next opportunity. He drags him into the ring like a child and throws him right on his poor fucking tailbone. That's not even a wrestling move that I know of. Hero's literally just ragdolling him around because honestly, why wouldn't you? He covers Darby and only gets a one count, to which Hero replies with a short knee to the head, because he doesn't appreciate it. He clubs Darby over the back, power slams him, and gives him the deepest leg drop I think I've ever seen. Yokozuna would be proud. And yet, Darby still kicks out at one. Now Hero's like, seriously? Okay, maybe I should stop playing around and just knock him out. And he elbows the shit out of him. But even when he takes it seriously, it's still only good for a one count. Now Hero's displaying a range of emotions that I guess go from being annoyed, to impressed, to confused, to contemplative, kind of all at the same time. Darby refuses to stay down and literally claws his way to the ropes, trying to make it to his feet, but Hero's like, nah, you're, you're staying down. Frustrated with this perceived effrontery, Hero yells at Darby, do you want to die? And he nearly rips his leg off of his fucking body. All this kicking out at one stuff is starting to get to Hero, like I said, in a few different ways. He dares Darby to punch him, as if he's just wrestling with himself at this point, toying with Darby and letting out his frustrations. Darby does indeed punch him, but Hero's like, nah, that's not good enough. And he manipulates his punching arm in a really disgusting way, telling him, this is what happens when you punch me. Aggressive veteran indeed. Now he dares Darby to headbutt him, and Darby gives him a few forearms before catching him with a pretty good headbutt that actually rocks Hero for a second. Darby doesn't have enough time to capitalize though, and Hero gives him a receipt. And it may not look like much, but trust me, back chops are the worst. I'm just saying, but I digress. Hero lifts Darby into an electric chair, but Darby slips out from behind, digs deep down, and uses his quickness to land a code red and get a two count. The crowd is firmly behind Darby now, chanting his name, and he uses the power of the fans to run out with a suicide dive. But he doesn't have enough oomph in it. Hero catches him and just throws him into the ring apron. Hero then punches him so hard he hurts his own hand, which conveniently gives Darby a few seconds to recover. Hero throws Darby into the ring, we get some fancy shit, and Darby again digs real deep into his soul to hit another suicide dive, this time learning from a second ago and putting more elbow grease into it, really launching himself at Hero and getting the most out of it. Attaboy. They both take a minute, Hero charges at Darby, but Darby steps aside and Hero hurdles himself into the crowd. Little Daredevil sees this as his biggest chance yet. He goes up to the top rope and swantons Hero into the front row. The crowd is so into Darby now, they really want to see him win. And how could you not? They go back into the ring, Darby goes for a springboard moonsault. Yay! Hero catches him. Aww. And Darby shoots out with a cool looking stunner. Yay! Wheelbarrow into a roll up. Yay! And Darby gets it too. Aww. Now that they got the crowd in the palm of their hands, they're really jerking their emotions around. Darby charges Hero and runs into an elbow. Hero rushes for a cover and only gets a goddamn one count. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? Am I doing something wrong? Is this kid made of rubber? I just, I... God damn it! The veteran props Darby's limp body up in the corner and gives him some kind of verbal lesson. It's not really audible, but I'm getting, this is gonna hurt you more than it's gonna hurt me vibes. Hero puts him up in an electric chair once again and throws him down like you would shake sand off a beach towel. And yet, Darby kicks out at one. Fuck this, dude. Still not good enough for a two count. <sighs> How do you kill someone who has a death wish, but refuses to die? If you're the knockout artist Chris Hero, maybe you don't know the answer right now, but taking off your elbow pad is probably a step in the right direction. He nails a rolling elbow that would knock the jaw straight off of a normal man's body, and then again for good measure. And then again, only a one count. The crowd is fucking unglued and they let it soak in. Hero's trying to balance shock with planning his next move. Darby is barely conscious, but he keeps trying to stand up, almost like it's just instinct. At this point, Hero decides if you can't beat him, insult him. He gets down and tells him, NXT ain't for you, boy. You think Vince McMahon would hire you? Oof, that, that cuts deep, man. And it fires Darby up. He throws desperate and wild punches, runs to the ropes, and catches a boot. Hero runs to the ropes now. Darby catches him with a forearm that actually rocks Hero. 
He's still in it, folks. This could be his big last chance. Springboard coffin draw? Oh, fuck. Darby starts to kick out at one, but Hero ends up finally getting a two count. Hero's like, ugh, finally, we're almost there. Hero ripcords his ass, puts all of his weight on him, and mercifully gets the three. Whew. Hero's about to leave when I guess his nerves have finally calmed down a bit, and he stops to look back in the ring where Darby is trying to get to his feet. The veteran's like, you know what, dude? You deserve it. And Darby, with a busted lip, and I assume hurt feelings over the whole Vince McMahon comment, just can't bring himself to reciprocate. While it would have been nice to see them let bygones be bygones and leave their shit in the ring, it's an interesting choice for Darby to be like, man, fuck that. I suppose it does fit his character. He's clearly a very sensitive boy. I'm not mad at it. And then Anthony Henry comes in and they do an angle to set up his match with Hero the next night. Uh, whatever, that's besides the point. This match, much like the Bola match, is a shining example of how to get someone over without actually having them win. It's a great way to use a veteran and transfer some of his heat to an up-and-comer without exposing him or compromising the veteran's position with the fans. Darby barely got any offense in. Instead, he just got the dog shit kicked out of him for about 20 minutes. And like the Jack Evans match, the kicking out at one every time thing was a plot point that makes it almost impossible to not cheer for him. You very easily could have had Hero just beating the crap out of Darby and the crowd cheering for Hero, because that's what most bloodthirsty fans love. Hero's not even a traditional bad guy, so that makes it even harder for the crowd to not cheer for him. And yet, through Darby's selling, his refusal to stay down, the facial expressions and the emotions they conveyed, knowing when to give Darby the offense and when to knock him on his ass, they pulled it off without having to do anything crazy. Darby looked to be on the verge of death like the whole time, and you could very easily see why and believe it. And at the same time, they didn't have to actually risk killing each other to get a rise out of the crowd. They didn't have to do like 5 million different moves and counters and whatnot. There was really only one high spot in the whole match, which was Darby's biggest comeback. And that made it stand out as that more impactful and important and memorable. Everything they did actually meant something. They told a very clear, very simple story, and they told it really fucking well. They did something different, and the crowd, and me, couldn't be happier. And that, my friends, is what I think wrestling is all about. I'm a lonely freak. I'm a freaking freak. Not do anything to get what I need. I hang out on the street with the people I meet. It's like a horror movie falling apart at the seams. I should be quarantined. Put on morphine. 